Does DC come out on top? Welcome back to Defending Football. Thank you guys so much for watching. Today we're gonna to be talking about the XFL Conference, some key players, and what I think is going to happen this year. If you're familiar with the UFL, there are eight teams split up into two conferences, the USFL Conference and the XFL Conference. In the USFL Conference, you have the Roughnecks, Showboats, Stallions, and Panthers. And in the XFL Conference, you have the Defenders, Renegades, Battlehawks, and Brahmas. Today we're going to be looking at the XFL Conference. I will probably do a USFL one soon. We are going to start off with probably the most popular team in all of spring football, the St. Louis Battlehawks. Last year, the St. Louis Battlehawks went 7-3, and three, just missed the playoffs. I know they're a little salty about it. But they're going to be on a revenge tour because A.J. McCarron is their first X-Factor player. He is returning to the UFL, and that automatically boosts the Battlehawks to a top-tier team in the UFL. He is obviously one of the better quarterbacks in the entire league, no question. It is going to be very entertaining. Not to mention the second X-Factor for the Battlehawks this year is Ja'Core Pearson. This guy was an absolute stud for the Seattle Sea Dragons last year. I don't see how he wouldn't make this offense better. Obviously, he is an outstanding wideout. I think he was the best receiver in the XFL last year. And not to mention their third X Factor. Yes, I went all offense for the Battlehawks. I could only pick three players. And I went Hakeem Butler. Pretty much the opposite of Jacor Pearson. Jacor Pearson is that short, shifty receiver that's very fast. And Hakeem Butler is huge, go up and get it receiver that you literally can't tackle. AJ McCarron has plentiful options at wide receiver, not to mention the other receivers that they retained as well. Their defense bolstered up, but I think there is one team that can rival them. But I'll get to them last. We're going to go with the San Antonio Brahmas. Now, the Brahmas went 3-7 and seven last year. They had Jack Conant quarterback, and they had Heinz Ward as their head coach, rookie head coach. I don't think Heinz Ward was a bad coach per se, but he just couldn't put it together, and Jack Cohn was not the player he wanted him to be. The Brahmas defense was great last year. But their offense just could not put it together, except Quentin Dormady, X-Factor number one, coming in, sliding into that offense, played for the Guardians last year. Of course, everyone knows the Guardians sucked. We all know that. But I think the Quentin Dormady slander is a little crazy. He did a lot with a little on that roster. Obviously, he needs some polishing and good coaching. But that's where Wade Phillips comes in. He hops in as the new head coach for the Brahmas. And obviously, he's a super experienced guy. He led the Roughnecks to a 7-3 record last year. But they also retained Drew Beasley, awesome edge rusher for the Brahmas last year. Had a pick six, I think, against Dormandy, actually. And then they added Dormandy's favorite target, Cody Latimer, best tight end in the XFL last year. Obviously, a former NFL guy. I think he was a receiver, and he transitioned to tight end. So that's a pretty good group of players there. They also grabbed a bunch of Roughnecks players. So the Brahmas are looking bolstered as well. I think every team pretty much got better, except maybe one, the Arlington Renegades. I had them right in the middle on my power rankings. I don't know how to feel about them. I put them above the Brahmas just because they won the championship and because of their first X Factor, Luis Perez. Luis Perez has shown that he can come into literally any system, be at least serviceable to great in that offense. I don't know how he does it. He's done it in pretty much every spring league I've ever seen, but he is your dependable starter. The Renegades went four and six last year, but we all know they went on a run in the playoffs, beat the Roughnecks, and somehow beat the Defenders. They did grab a Jane Harris, the Roughnecks, and he is a ball hawk at defensive back. Definitely going to help bolster that defense, which was one of the best ones in the league last year. And then, of course, Vic Beasley joins to the squad from the Vegas Vipers. Now, obviously, that cannot be a bad signing whatsoever. So overall, the Renegades kind of got some new pieces, but at the same time, didn't get a lot of offensive firepower. So compared to the other two teams I mentioned, they might be the weakest. Obviously, we got to talk about the fourth team. I don't know what team that would be. The DC Defenders, baby. 9-1 last year to the championship and just didn't have enough. But the reason we got there is X-Factor number one, Jordan Tayamu, using his arm and his legs to extend drives for the Defenders. Obviously, we built a scheme around him and it worked out to perfection. Not to mention he could turn around and hand the ball off to Abram Smith, one of the best running backs in all of spring football, and I'm hoping that he cements himself as the best one in spring football this season. If the defenders keep humming on offense, we will not be stopped, and that is because our defense with Trent Harris added, and that's only one piece that I'm mentioning. The defenders' defense is absolutely stacked, probably one of the best units talent-wise in the whole UFL, I mean, the defenders are looking good. You can't deny it. Two teams will make the playoffs. Two teams will be left out and upset. So here's what I got. 
Number four in the XFL conference is going to be the Arlington Renegades. Congratulations, you got your little championship, but now it's a merger and this championship is the only one that's gonna matter. Does anyone care that the Bills won two championships before the Super Bowl? No. Unfortunately, you were gonna be in the basement of this division. Next up, I have the San Antonio Brahmas just missing the playoffs. I honestly think they are going to be a pretty good team and we may see another six and four, seven and three missing the playoff situation. I really like the roster, but can Dormany put it all together? I don't know. It's going to take him some time to gel with the offense and for Wade Phillips to get this team rallied around him. So I think they're just going to barely miss out on the playoffs. At number two, I have the St. Louis Battlehawks. I think the Battlehawks are going to make the playoffs this year. I know they're excited because they can't lose to the Dragons anymore. So just because of that, I think they are going to make it. Obviously, their team is stacked offensively. Defensively, we could poke a few holes in there. So I do have the Battlehawks at number two. But the number one division leader from last year, actually, the DC defenders are going to take it. I just don't see basically any holes on this roster. I really think it is so solid that if we can put it all together and play to our potential, it's going to be a tough division, but I think we had a tough division last year as well, and we still balled out. I expect the DC defenders to take the number one spot, and I expect them to make the playoffs. That is what I think about the division, but I'm going to get out of here. So for the love of football, defend football, baby!